The private station at Capital Park Pretoria, was once bustling hub of steam locomotion, now the headquarters for Rovos Rail. The gracious railway station serves as the departure or arrival point for most of the train journeys. Rovos rail trains are five-star hotels on wheels. But that is not the reason we came here. We are looking for a relic of the anglo War, the sixth-class locomotive of Cape Government Railways. And here it comes. The oldest engine in the Rovos stable is also the smallest. Number 439 Tiffany at Class 6 locomotive, is one of 40 locomotives the first of which was delivered in 1893 and was built by Dubs and Company. The engine was purchased in 1987. The sixth class was introduced primarily as a passenger locomotive in the Cape Colony, but would eventually see service in all parts of the country, except Nuttall, and would be used on all types of traffic. By the time the last ones were eventually withdrawn from service in 1973, the Class 6 had achieved a service life of 80 years, a performance which can be matched by few other locomotive classes worldwide. When the Anglo-Boer War broke out on the 11th of October 1899, both the Boers and the British were under a false impression that the war would be over by Christmas, whereas, in fact, the conflict ultimately dragged on for two and a half years. Nowhere else in the world was a war fought over such a large area that was served by such poor road communications. The only effective system of communication in South Africa was the railway line and the associated telegraphic links. Because of this, the entire war revolved around the railways. Thus the conflict can be regarded as a railway war, both at the initial stage of conventional warfare and during the successive lengthy stage of guerrilla-type war. The railways were burdened by massive quantities of troops, ammunitions and supplies and ploughed up by enemy gunfire. Railway transport however had a positive as well as negative impact on military operations. While it boosted the movement of troops and supplies, making for speedier transportation of larger quantities over difficult terrain, it also made armies, 
especially the British one much more dependent on the proximity of railways. In 1901, when nearly all the Republicans' artillery had been captured, an effective system of blockhouses was built which were initially constructed for the defense of railway bridges and to keep burghers off the railway lines. Nineteen armored trains were used to patrol railways. During drives, they were deployed to intercept boar commandos who tried to break through blockhouse lines. Although these mobile blockhouses did, in fact, pose a threat to the guerrillas, they were too few and too cumbersome to play a decisive role in the overall counter-guerrilla strategy. On the Cape Government Railways, 457 locomotives were available for duty which included 245 heavy duty and 212 lighter duty locomotives. The most modern and powerful locomotives were the 6th and 7th classes. On gradients of 1 in 80 and less, Trains were hauled by six-wheel coupled tender engines with loads limited to 380 tons. These were mainly CGR 6th class engines with driving wheels four and a half feet in diameter. On the 1 in 40 grades, heavier engines were used. These were the 7th class 8-wheel coupled tender engines with driving wheels 3 feet 6 inches in diameter. Maximum load on the 1 in 40 gradient was 200 tons. <laughs> 